Hey there, Tony and Sockery. Sam and Chris Hockman here with the wrap-up of week 20 of the MLS season. The Colorado Rapids kept their good run of form as of late going as they shot out to a 2-0 lead over the Philadelphia Union before the half. Both goals really taking advantage of poor defensive work from the Union. It got worse for the Union with, uh, when Sheenan Williams really killed his team's chances earning a red card after arguing with the referee. He was shown a yellow first, but then he was shown a straight red, uh, presumably for offensive language, which is just inexcusable. The Rapids were happy to just sit back and maintain their lead, uh, but the Union weren't giving up, and in stoppage time they found a goal thanks to Torres. But it was too little too late for the Union as the Rapids won comfortably 2-1. Things only got worse in Vancouver as they come to a 4-0 loss at the hands of the Los Angeles Galaxy. Uh, particularly Landon Norman, who scored a brace and set up one goal. Things were good early for Vancouver, though as the new, as the new designated player, Mr. Fajara, drew almost put his side in front. Uh, it was after Hussey's good one and Judge who should have tested the keeper but instead launched it over the bar. As the half went on, LA Galaxy came more and more into the match and Joe Cannon was forced to make a number of saves, keeping the side scoreless at the break. But the LA Galaxy came out determined in the second half and kept pushing for the goal. And at the 61st minute, they finally had their reward. Boxall fell, which allowed Donovan a one-on-one -on -one with Cannon to open the scoring. Saunders then kept the LA Galaxy in front with a great save for second quarter. And Donovan second came in the 75th minute from the penalty spot after Harvey's handball. And from there, the floodgate opened. Five minutes later, Franklin scored with a neat finish slide in front of Cannon after Donovan's cross. Before Chris Vaughan scored the fourth in the final minute of the match LA for Vancouver. Nil. Things were going so well for the Ewing Wonders that they took on Sporting Kansas City. They live strong park. They opened the game well and they dominated the opening 10 minutes before taking the lead in the 38th minute. After an error from Daniel Cyrus allowed Lukic to take full advantage and open the scoring. Kansas City nearly leveled it. Just after the break, Skyro's neat work allowed him to send it across, which was spilled by Rice. Lang Sinovic a queer shot a goal from the tight angle. Sinovic, though, sent it over the bar. Kansas City started to go for the game with Omar Robo coming on for Seth Edge just before the hour mark, allowing Kansas City to really take control with Seth on Robo and Jeffs pushing forward. Rekard also helped out Kansas City as AJ Saul was denied an obvious goal scoring opportunity when he took down Sapong. And yet again, it was late drama in Kansas City as Teal Bumbery. Buried an 89th minute equaliser, keeping the winning streak, the underpaid home streak, intact at Livestrong Park, considering New England Revolution 1. The Columbus crew took sole possession of the lead of the Eastern Conference as they managed a win at the formidable Rio Tinto Stadium, beating Real Salt Lake 2 0. Columbus really took the fights at RSL early and got the lead just five minutes into the match. As Rogers got around his defenders and sent a square ball for a wide open Eddie gave him, who was able to score easily. Uh, Columbus kept up the pressure and just five minutes later they had their second. Rogers again with the assist, sending the ball in for Heineman, who headed home the second. RSL tried to go for it, bringing on attacking players, but the crew were able to shut the game down. Now playing Real, managing a 2 0 win. Dwayne De Rosario just loves playing against the Earthquakes. And this time he was wearing a DC United kit, and he managed two goals to win Player of the Week honours as DC United defeated San Jose 2 0. De Rosario has now scored five, team, five times against the club that signed him to the MLS back in 2001. It's an allocation player from the Richmond Kickers. The Quakes have now gone nine matches winless. That's their longest streak since rejoining the MLS in 2008. It was a mostly defensive match as there was only one shot during the first half from either side. The DC United took the lead through De Rosario, taking advantage of Atacora's slip, which allowed him time and space as he sent the ball past the keeper from just outside the box for DC's first goal in 299 minutes. Chris Ponte stepped, set up De Rosario's second in the 67th minute as he got three on the left and sent a good ball for De Rosario, perfectly placing his shot into the upper right corner of the net. For a 2-0 lead, even Pontius's ejection in the 70th minute couldn't help the struggling Quakes as the match ended. 2-0. Seattle got off to a good start against Houston, carving the Houston defense open early. Uh, something that seemed to have waken up the Dynamo, who pushed it and scored an early goal. Colin Clark showing great composure to control well at close range, under pressure, and score the other 
He's in the minute two with Bronin Chin celebrating his return from injury in the starting lineup with a goal after a cross from Kemper and he got around his man and headed the ball past Case Killer. The goals really set Houston moving as they really put Seattle under a lot of pressure. Killer making a number of saves before the Dynamo opened the door for Seattle, giving away a penalty which was duly slotted home by Fernandez. Houston Dynamo came out from the break the better side and really wanted to build on their lead. And they got the reward in the 71st minute as Ching scored his second. After the ball from Clark set up a simple tap in for Ching, wrapping up the match for the Dynamo. Toronto FC finally showed what this new look side is capable of after a thrilling 2 2 draw with Paul in the Jell Blinfield. The Timbers added their own fresh faces as Houston trades Lovell Palmer and Mike Chabala joined the side. And the changes seemed to it seemed to work as the Timbers took the early lead. Eddie Johnson scoring after a good counter attack from the Timbers. The Toronto defence being called out as they rushed to the man with the ball, leaving Johnson wide open with the easiest of chances shortly after half time. It was 2 0 as Andy Ero dragged down Diego Chara Dewsbury, having no trouble scoring the penalty. When they say 2 0 leaders are nervously. This is something that I know well, uh, being Australian and remembering them scoring a 2 0 lead to miss out on the 1998 World Cup. That was proved true yet again as Portland yet again blew a lead. In the 71st minute, the Timbers failed to clear, leaving a loose ball for Kovmans to, to jump on Cinder Bonabarasevich, who scored a goal on his Toronto debut. The comeback was complete just 11 minutes later as Plata's cross was met by Kovmans right for and sent to the back of the net. The result saw the Timbers boot off the field, the fans expecting better from their club. And Chavez continued his good form of scoring for FC Dallas as he scored the only goal on FC Dallas's win over Shivas USA. It was a hot day, 102 degrees in Dallas, the hottest match ever at Pizza Hut Park, and he'd obviously affected the match. But even with the drinks break, Shivas USA started well, but Dallas came more and more to the match as the Texas seat began to take its toll. Dallas broke through in the 26th minute as Luna found Chavez, whose powerful shot was aimed straight at Pierce, who could do nothing but deflect it into the back of his own net. Shivas thought they'd equalised just after the break, but were denied a judo foul in the build-up play. That was as close as Shivas USA would get. And as Dallas shut down the match, winning 1-0. Thank you for viewing my MLS wrap-up for this week. And I hope to see you next Tuesday for another MLS wrap-up. Don't forget to visit examiner.com, the internet source for the local. See you next Tuesday.